In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly King, Paraclete, Spirit of Truth, you who are everywhere present and fill all things, treasury of all that is good, master of life, come, dwell within us, cleanse us from all stain, and save our souls, O good one. Mary, cause of our joy, pray for us. Today, I want to go back a little bit in this chapter 5 of John, pick up again at verse 19, which is the beginning of our Lord's response to their accusation. You see, the, the Jews asked him, that, now the Jews, usually in quotation marks, but we don't, I can't go like this every time. Um, it doesn't mean the Jewish people. It means a certain group of leaders, usually concentrated in Jerusalem, who have a lot of power and uh, don't like anybody messing with it. Those are the ones that are the Jews who are opposed to him. Not every Jewish person. His mother is Jewish, besides the fact that he's Jewish. Anyway, uh, the Jews began to persecute Jesus because he did this on a Sabbath, this healing of this man at the pool. But Jesus answered them, My father is at work until now, and so I am at work. For this reason, the Jews tried to all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but he also called God his own father, making himself equal to God, which is exactly what he did. But you see, the problem is, there's no such thing as perfect equality in an unrenewed mind. If he's claiming equality, he's claiming competition. And the only place where we can see this work perfectly is in the Trinity. Total, absolute equality and total, infinite difference. So they can't imagine when he says, the Father is working, I'm working. You know, he's trying to make himself God. Well then, equal to God. Well, if he's equal to God, he's in competition with God. That's our fallen mind. Now, we have to learn the Trinity to get our, our, our fallen mind clear. And it's work for all of us, but it's a wonderful work. Just pray and reflect. There's infinite equality and no competition. And yet, the Father is the Principium Dei Tatisa. He's the principle of the deity. The Son receives everything from him. Spirit receives everything from both of them, and they're totally equal. Hard for us to grasp, isn't it? Because we're always saying, well, who's the best? Who's first? All right. So now, what I want to go is go back over now some of the remarks that Jesus makes, starting with verse 19 of chapter 5. Um, Jesus answered then and said to them, A many men, I say to you, the Son cannot do anything on his own except what he sees the Father doing. He's trying to mediate to them this sense of Trinity. It's hard. You know, for a long time, the Muslims would not dialogue with Christians because they said, you're tritheists. You think there's three gods. And finally, philosophically, we were able to distinguish between person and nature and then they could understand the nature of our claim. They didn't accept it. But and that's why we can dialogue with them when we do. And so, then he says, you see, uh, see, he doesn't do anything except what he sees the Father doing. And yet, he's totally equal to the Father. You can't grasp that except in love. It's like when Jesus once said to St. Teresa, who are you? She said, I'm Teresa of Jesus. And he said, I'm Jesus of Teresa. Isn't that beautiful? Now, they're not equal. But love can make a parity, like even though there's an infinite difference between them. And so, um, so, whatever he does, that the Son also does, or likewise does. 
For the Father loves the Son and has shown him everything that he does. You see this, uh, trying to describe equality and receptivity in God. And our Lord did this and he healed on the Sabbath to put down this challenge. And it's a challenge for all of us. But you see, with the Holy Spirit, we can be brought into this sanctuary and begin to grasp this incredible love, infinite love, and be brought into the family, even in this life, of the family of the Trinity. And just be in awe at this love and learn how to love because of it. Um, and you'll show him greater things than this, you see, so that you will be amazed. Now he begins, as we saw rapidly last week, as the Father, just as, Hosper, the Father raises the dead and gives life, so the Son gives life to him whom he wills. Just as. We're still trying to learn what just as means. That is, just as. Oh, then you're the Father. No, I'm the Son. I receive everything from the Father, but we're infinitely, eternally equal. That's what he's saying, you see. Now, there could be an allusion there to the text in Genesis 2-7, where God forms Adam from the soil and breathes into him. You see, gives him life. Um, so, Remember the things that the Jewish tradition said only God can do. One is give life or healing, and the other is judging. Our Lord already said now, uh, just as the Father raises from the dead and gives life, so the Son gives life to him whom he wills. So he's claiming to do what only God can do, especially on the Sabbath, because you see, no work on the Sabbath. They're serious, you know. Even if I'm a Jewish shopkeeper and want to uh, make money on Shabbat because, I mean, the tourists and everybody, I open up my door, there'll be a rock through my window in five minutes. No way. And so, you see, Shabbat. Uh, now, the Father does not judge anyone, but he has handed over judgment to the Son. Um, isn't that marvelous? You see? Uh, this only, only God can judge. And I judge. And I received it all from the Father. That's the, that's the baffling part. You want to see only God can judge and I judge, then you're claiming to be God, you're a man, we're going to kill you. But when he says, only God can judge, and I judge, and I receive it all from the Father, now what? Then you're not God. Yes, I am. You see how? Augusta was trying to explain something like this once. And he said, finally, amanti loquo. I speak to one who loves. Without that, you're not going to get it. So... Um, for the Father doesn't judge anybody. He's given all judgment to the Son so that all will honor the Son as they honor the Father. See, this work on the Sabbath is to open up life within the Trinity. Okay. He, this is very powerful, he who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. It's a challenge to the Jews. You don't honor me, you don't honor God. Whoa. And many men, I say to you that uh, the one who hears my word, now this is also powerful. It's all Trinity. We have to meditate on it. You know? The one who hears my word and believes in the one who sent me doesn't say believes in me, says believes in the one who sent me, has eternal life and doesn't come into judgment. Isn't that beautiful? You see, 
but he has passed from death to life. Now, that's a Johannine phrase, right? It's in chapter uh, a little later down here, and then it's in um, the first letter. In this we know we have passed from death to life because we love the brothers. Okay? And now it goes on on this theme, you see? Um, in many men I say to you that an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear it will live. He will call them. That <clears throat> is a phrase, it's a vision sort of thing. If you just give me a minute, I can read it to you. It might help uh, in Thessalonians. Um, Oops, went too far. Where Paul is describing, the Thessalonians are pretty excited about the Lord coming right back. And we got to get ready. In fact, if you remember, some of them say, well, if he's coming right back, there's no point in working. Remember that? And he says, if I command you, if you don't work, you don't eat. Uh, you know, why work? He's coming back, you know? Kind of funny. I think maybe we'll start working. If he comes, he'll find us working. That's a good idea. <clears throat> well, he didn't. <coughs> <coughs> and so, for the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. See, there'll be a call. They'll hear his voice. And then he goes on, you see. Amen, amen, I say to you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those hearing will live. Now, that applies to many things, right? To the dead, dead. The hour is now here when that regime is in place. It hasn't fully transpired yet, but it will. But there's also the dead in sin who hear the voice and begin to live. You see, and so, as the Father has life in himself, so he gave to the Son uh, to have life in himself. This is a very beautiful line, right? In other words, the Father gives the Son equality. How do you do that? If I give you $1,000, well, I gave you something you didn't give me, so I'm better than you are, or richer, or something. But in the Trinity, no. The Father gives everything to the Son, and they're equal. This is love. And the more we learn from the Trinity, the more we can love. You see? Give it away. Give it away. And uh, don't make people beholden to you. Let them be receivers with dignity. See, so life in himself, and he gave to him to, to judge judgment because he is the son of man. Now, that's a very interesting line. Because he is the variable in the Trinity, yeah, but because he is the son of man, because he is so identified, you see, with, with mankind, he judges as an equal to us, but with authority.